Hello and welcome. This time we said we are going to talk about switching controllers. So, we will do. Let's talk about switching. Switching controllers. Why are we using switching controllers? It's simple. Because it's much cheaper. Okay? It's much cheaper to turn something on and off than to turn something to different continuous states in between. This is much, much cheaper and faster and so on. So also the controlled element, uh, this is much cheaper. You need just to have a switch. You don't have to need something which is continuous changing. Turn off, turn on, enough for switching controllers. It's everywhere. It's the controller, it's the control element, the controlled element, it's the amplifiers, it's everything is cheaper with switching uh, with switching controllers. At continuous controllers, you simply need to invest more money. Okay. What is the base principle of switching controllers? Switching controllers means why? The correcting variable can only have discrete values. Yeah? Only a few discrete values. Okay. If we are having digital controllers, we would have discrete values as well, but not only a few. Yeah. There are many, many steps in a digital controller. Here we only have two. Switching controllers are usually used where, uh, you know, the accuracy is not that important. Yeah? The accuracy is not that important and where the costs really, really kick in. Yeah? Serious products. So, examples for switching controllers are, you know, heaters, room heaters. They turn on and off the heating depending on the, on the room. They're not just sending half of the power out. They're sending full power out or nothing. Refrigerators, refrigerators, also. They stop or they cool. And if it's cold enough, they stop. And if it's getting warmer, they cool again. Yeah. Also, your stove. Yeah. You cook your soup on. Or I don't know what you're cooking. Yeah. Also there. Turn on. If it's hot enough, turn off. Yeah. Toaster, the same. Yeah. So... Uh, there are quite, there's quite a market for, for these switching controllers. Switching controllers are non-linear elements. There is no linearity in switching. It's on or off. It's a switch. Non-linear. This means we, it, they are not covered by our system theory, with our Laplace transformation. Now, we talked a lot about standard transfer elements and Laplace operation and, and body plots and frequency and step response and so on and now I'm telling you eh, switching controllers you cannot use it. Nah, it's only half true. We will see. Let's have a look on the different types of, of switching controllers. Okay. So there's a two-point controller. Okay. One example is a two-point controller. Two-point controller, there is simply, this is the transfer element, if you want to call it that way. Yeah. Here, there is the difference, the controller difference kicking in. Okay. XT. XT. 
and out, there is the, of course, the correcting variable, like always in controllers. And inside here, we do have following behavior. If the difference is zero or below, the output is zero. Ah, I will draw it in orange better maybe. So if the difference is zero below, the output is zero. And then, back, we are switching to 100% or to a certain value. Why zero? There's a certain value. Usually, everything we've got. Okay? So here, that's xd, that's the difference, and here that's y. Every time xd is getting positive, switch. Every time xd is getting negative, turn off. That's it. Yeah? This is a two-point controller with no hysteresis. Yeah? So this is without hysteresis. The big disadvantage of this controller is if we are very close here, yeah, we maybe end up switching on off, on off, on off, on off, on off very, very fast. Okay? This usually, this usually uh, is not that good for the controlled element. Okay? There are also two point, two point uh, controllers with hysteresis. Basically, they look like this. So it's pretty much the same. But if we again look at xd and here we have y, we are not going to switch immediately after reaching zero. We will switch short time afterwards. Back. And then if we're coming down, we're also not switching back here. We drop a little bit and switch back here. Okay. So there, there is a certain hysteresis. There's a certain hysteresis. So we must have a delta here. Okay. We must have a delta. 2 times the delta is the switching hysteresis. Outside everything is the same. Of course. So we cannot end up switching a lot of... Yeah, because we switch on here, and in worst case it takes a while and then we switch off again. And then it takes a while, switch on again. So it will take a little bit longer yeah, for this. However, there are just two states. Two states. Two point without hysteresis, and this here is with hysteresis. Three point. Three point controller. They look like this. Here we do have again our XD, and here we do have again our Y. However, this y now changing in two steps, so we have three different different states. Yeah? We have one which is minus, then we have one where nothing is output, then we have one where plus is output. Okay? 
three steps simply. So here is here is a value and here is a value. And here this is called epsilon. It's the middle step width. What could this be, for instance? Let's say one thing is turning on cooling and one thing is turning on heating. If it's too hot in the room, we turn on cooling. If it's too cold in the room, we turn on heating. And in between, if it's perfect, we do nothing. That's one example of a three-point controller. And this one, this particular one, it's also without hysteresis. Without hysteresis, three-point controller without hysteresis. Three-band controller with hysteresis is also possible. So let's also draw it to have a full picture here. XT, Y. Coming here. We switch, coming here, we switch, coming down, we switch a little bit later, coming down, we also switch a little bit later. Okay. That's with hysteresis. Hysteresis. I will also draw here the arrows that we know in which direction this is moving. So if we're going up, here, here, later. If we're going down, also later in this. There are two times this hysteresis things here. With hysteresis. Basically, these are the controllers we're going to talk about, yeah. or I want to mention as example, let's say. Yeah. Now I said, yeah, the switching controllers. We cannot use our, our system theory here. There is no transfer function for this, yeah, because simply it's switching and not linear. However, we can use our knowledge about transfer functions to analyze this a little bit. Okay. Can use this. Let's make one example. Let's make an example of a PT1 transfer function of the system. Okay. We're going to use a PT1 transfer function of the system. I will draw here now coordinate system. Here, that's the maximum. Let's say this is the value we reach in the system. If we, this is the controller, and the system reaches an end value because it's PT1, if we turn on here, yeah, if this is 100%, we're going to reach this value. Okay. And the system has, of course, a certain time constant. certain time constant of the system. Let's say we start at zero yeah, and we're going to bring it up. Okay. We're going to bring it up. I will use now linear. This would be here the time constant and this would be the tangent. What would happen? What would happen if we now heat it up or we'll bring it up? Five centimeters, two time constant, three times constant, four time constant, five time constant. Huh? 
here somewhere we will reach our end value. We turn it on, it will move up. Here, tuck, ah, tuck, 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 tuck. So this is how it would look like. This is how it would look like. We know this PT1 feature. Okay. However, we also know the behavior of our switching controller. So if there is a wanted value, we will use this one. So if there is a wanted value, let's say our wanted value, our reference value, is somewhere here. This is our reference value. Here we want the controller to stop, to control. Then we do have hysteresis, we have here this delta and here this delta. This will be the switching points. Here we are going to switch, because it's not a perfect sketch but it needs to be a little bit more accurate than my usual sketches because we want to, to do something. Here, at this point, we're going to switch off. At this point, we're going to switch off. The cooling of this, if it's cooling down, it would look almost the same, yeah? of course, but the other way around. So if it's cooling down, it would look like this. Somehow. Yeah? And if we switch off in this point, we're going to parallel this to here. So 1.2 centimeters here. Yeah. This is the parallel of the of this curve. Yeah. So we're going to heat it up. And then we're switching off. Yeah. And then this will start to drop. Like at this line will start to drop. And here, if the difference is high again, we'll turn on. Here we turn on again and it will look exactly like this, this curve, this part of the curve again. It will always look the same. See? It's let's see 2.5, 2.8, so almost three centimeters here. We heat it as a here. We heat it up. It's also parallel to this curve. This part of the curve we see here. Now we have again this part of the curve, and we end up in continuous fluctuation around our set point, around our reference variable. Continuous fluctuations. There is a certain, there is a certain time. Okay. This time depends a little. This time depends on uh, maybe I should also write here. We have W, we have W plus delta, and we have W minus delta. And this switching time here, this switching time, this depends, of course, on the hysteresis. The hysteresis is bigger, this will also be bigger. But the fluctuations 
plus minus around the reference value will also be bigger. Okay. And unluckily also these fluctuations change a little bit if you're up or down because it takes you really long to go the same amount up. It's shorter than to go down. But also uh, it is depending where we are. This is a typical sign of switching controllers. This inhomogeneous behavior. There is always a jittering around. There's always some period swinging around the wanted value, around the set point. This is why I said these things are used if it's not meant to be that accurate. Okay. However, what if we could manage to switch really fast? Huh? To switch really fast so that we are turning on and off very fast. So that, that let's say, then the hysteresis is very small. Yeah? Then we're turning on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. And it's really not that much of a deal if we're making this faster and faster and faster this will look almost like straight okay. and in reality we do have switch on off on off on off, on off. Yeah. therefore we would need switching elements which can be turned on and off very fast without wear okay i can turn on and off mechanical contacts also very fast however they will be destroyed very fast. There is something called electronics. I'm sure you heard about it. So there's something called electronics. And one part of this electronics is, for instance, a transistor. And transistor can be used to switch very, very fast. And meanwhile, yeah, with the power electronics, it can even switch quite big loads. So... If you're using such a transistor instead of a relay, a switching element, we could get to a pretty satisfying result. And this is really how it is done. Yeah. There are a lot of things which work now that way. For instance, a frequency converter. Yeah. Frequency converter for your motor is switching. It's a switching element. It's just turning off and on very fast and in a way that the motor is turning with the frequency, with the rotation speed we want. Okay. This is one example which is might, might, might be surprising that this is a switching controller. Then, for instance, the brightness on our cell phones, the display lights, yeah, they are not simply turned darker or brighter. They are, turning, they are turned on and off very fast. Our eye will not notice. Yeah? But if you want to have it bright, it, they will be on for a longer time. If you want to have it dark, they will be off for a longer time. Yeah? And this will be repeated, I don't know, thousand hertz. Yeah? Something like this. So there are a lot of switching controllers which appear to us like they would not be switching, like they would be continuous simply by switching very fast. One possibility of building such a switching controller which must switch very fast and can then practically have some transfer function is looking like this. Uh, I'll use a new sheet. So we have a big block, okay. not a small block, we have a big block, big block, and inside inside we do have our switching controller. The switching controller's output is of course our correcting variable, which will reach the outside world. Okay. And the input we said 
is the difference, uh, controller difference. However, this will not be fed directly into the switching controller. No, there is a summation point. And here we only feed in some result of this. And the result simply is difference minus output value. There is a minus. Here is a plus. That's xd. And here we do have y. And this here is the switching controller. Switcher. How is this working? Let's say our controller difference is big enough. Let's make Let's make a drawing. We said here is XD, here is Y. Let's say our controller difference is big enough and now we are here. Now we are here somewhere. That's our current XD. We turn on Y and Y, this will be reduced. This is reducing XD. I've forgotten here. Here is some transfer function, FH. Feedback transfer function. So this will be this Y will be transformed somehow by this transfer function and will be reducing this XT. If this XT is big enough, here is the output of minus Y. Let's call it minus y multiplied by fh. Yeah? This here. If this uh, difference was big enough, nothing will change. However, if we are here with our difference, yeah? second case, I will use a second, second color, then I am also reducing by the same part. Yeah? This here is exactly minus y fh. Yeah? And now we're suddenly at the other side. And now we're switching off. The controller will switch off. Then we are here. The controller will switch on. Then we're here. The controller will switch off. Then we're here. The controller will switch on. And so on. So this switches then very fast. In a way that maybe, yeah, maybe we're getting closer to this point. And then XD is no longer dropping that fast, but slower. And if we reach the, the, this wanted point, yeah, it might turn on and off exactly in a way that this XD is kept almost zero. We will now substitute this here. Basically, what switching on means is like it behaves like a p-element. This behaves like a p-element. With k almost going to infinity. It will always book, regardless how small the difference is, the output will go to 100%. This we are going as used to use as a substitution of this element. The total transfer function here, the total transfer function here, if this here is y from s multiplied by fh from s, and this y from s is here, this I will call. D 
D from S. This is then a D from S. This is D from S multiplied by a K. K. This is the transfer function of this element, with K going to unlimited. Okay. And this D from S. is x d from s minus this part here y from s multiplied by f h from s okay. this will bring in here yeah. so then we have written I will again use it with the colors y from s equals now d from s. Here we have x d minus y from s multiplied by f h from s and everything multiplied by k. Okay. Multiplied by k. This is this formula here. So we, we solved such type of equation several times. I will multiply k in here. So we have k multiplied by xd from s minus y from s multiplied by fh from s multiplied by k. Okay. Separation of variables. So we end up with y from s minus y from s fh from s multiplied by k and this equals k multiplied by xd. Okay. Now move this out y from s bracket 1 minus fh from s multiplied by k equals xd from s multiplied by k. Okay. Now bring it to the other side. y from s equals xd from s k divided by 1 minus fh from s multiplied by k huh? we got we solved this several times and now let's see what is happening yeah? because this now is the transfer function of the regulator, fr. However, there is something special about this fr, because this fr from s, we said this k must be very high, almost unlimited. So we are simply writing lamus k going to unlimited k divided by 1 minus minus fh from s multiplied by k and now I do the same old trick as before yeah I divide by k the limits I forgot the limits k to unlimited if k is going to unlimited this is going to be zero yeah and this is one divided by Aha. Here, of course, this is plus. <laughs> Again, somewhere in error. Yeah. 1 divided by fh. And you see, the total transfer function, the total transfer function of the regulator, even if it's only switching, it's not doing something special, it's switching on and off, but it behaves like a continuous transfer function 
and I can select with this transfer function down here the total transfer function of the regulator, of the controller. Okay. There is, it's a switching controller which behaves like a continuous controller. I know the only thing is I need elements which can switch really fast. But this, this can be used. Okay, this can be used. Then we're ending up not like this. It will look smooth. Hmm. Switching controllers. That's about what I'm going to talk about. Next time, we're going to talk about the first time of continuous controllers. Yeah, we're going to talk about a P controller. For this time, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.